Hi everybody, welcome to today's video, how to critique a research journal article that's useful for any healthcare students or professionals being asked to critique a paper in an assignment or as part of a dissertation. And I'll present lots of tips that I hope you find useful. Some of you might also be interested in my free videos on my YouTube channel to support critical writing, such as critical analysis and essays, how to write in third person. Both those videos got some practical narrative examples, qualitative, quantitative and mixed methods research, which includes the different approaches linked to their data collection methods and data analysis methods, and then citations and references that has example in text citations and how to paraphrase. So I hope you find those helpful. So what does critiquing a published research study involve? You're evaluating making a judgment on the research study published in a journal. So you're critically appraising the evidence in the research article to establish its value and relevance to an area of interest. And you're also looking at how clearly the authors write about their research. For example, they might fail to mention ethical approval when they conducted a study in hospitals with patients, which would always warrant ethical approval. So you're critiquing, you're appraising, you're evaluating the strengths and weaknesses of the research. What value does it have for others? And you should always present a balanced, tentative and objective view in your critique. And to do this, you need to justify the points you're making. And there's lots of different areas you can critique uh, with research, which I'll talk about later. But if we just look at limitations of a research study, for example, or it could be a systematic review article, we could look at how applicable and generalizable the study is to patients or doctors or nurses. And if you say the study is not generalizable to the wider population, then you need to back up why you say this. So for example, was it a local research study on one ward? It would not be generalizable to all UK wards or all UK patients. Similarly, if it was a systematic review and you had specific inclusion and exclusion criteria that might narrow the search down to hospital wards only, then it wouldn't be generalizable. That review would not be generalizable to community settings. And then a study presenting only a quantitative study presenting only descriptive statistics is not generalizable to the wider population. Whereas if researchers use inferential statistics, it could be applicable to a wider population. So there's some examples there where we're justifying what we're saying in a critique regarding the study's limitations. So when you're critiquing a research article, it's important to remember it's not just about negative criticism. For example, a strength might be that the researcher has used a widely tested or published data collection instrument, or they conducted a pilot study to test their data collection tools. Um, or software could be used to check and interpret the study data. And we've got software packages to analyze statistical data in a quantitative study, or to analyze unstructured text, audio or video in qualitative studies. And that enhances rigor in a study or the precision, precision can't talk today, and accuracy of the data and findings. Also, when you give your perspective in a critique and you appraise a published article, we do have a range of critical appraisal checklists out there that can lead you through the critique of a published article methodically and systematically, which I'll discuss. And I'll also offer some key tips and areas to look at when you're critiquing an article. So I'm often asked by students, how does critique link to critical analysis? So with critical analysis, you're combining evidence from several critiqued articles. So you've got all your individually individual articles critiqued, and that informs an overall perspective, key points and conclusions. And I've got a video on critical analysis in essays that might help any of you struggling with critical analysis. And synthesis is part of critical analysis. So synthesis is just a process where you combine lots of parts to form a connected whole. So a critical analysis essay involves combining lots of parts that would be your individually critiqued articles to make a whole, which is your overall key points conclusions in an analytical essay. So before I give you some key tips to help your critique, when we make a judgment on healthcare research, it's helpful to review a hierarchy of best evidence in healthcare. And this hierarchy evaluates and makes a judgment on the type of research that higher quality research is higher up on the hierarchy. So for example, systematic reviews and meta-analysis are classed as the best type of evidence at the top of the hierarchy. Randomized control trials are above observational studies, and then expert opinion and anecdotal experiences are at the bottom of 
the hierarchy. So a systematic review is deemed higher quality evidence than an anecdotal opinion piece from one staff member. And it might be something that you want to comment on if your article is presenting anecdotal opinion or if you're commenting on the type of design and where it sits on that hierarchy. There are also critical appraisal checklists um, that you can use to help guide a critique of a research article. And there's a range of tools for qualitative, quantitative and mixed methods research. And the critical appraisal skills program websites provide these free checklists. It's internationally renowned resource and the checklists are free to download for systematic reviews, qualitative studies, randomised control trials, cohort studies, case control studies, diagnostic studies and economic evaluation studies. So do check those out. You might also want to look at the mixed methods appraisal tool from Hong et al. And again, this tool guides a critique on the appraisal. It appraises the quality of five different categories of studies that includes qualitative research, randomised control trials, non-randomised studies, quantitative descriptive studies and mixed method studies. And again, it's using the checklist approach that with these questions that can help guide your critique. So you might want to check those out before you start your critique as well. You might find them helpful. So a few areas to look at when you're critiquing any research paper. The first thing you read are, is the title and abstract. So the title needs to be clear and you're checking out whether that title marries up with what the research is about or the review is about. And is it or is it unclear? Is it ambiguous and confusing as the researchers are not doing what they say they were going to do on the title? So, for example, if a, stud a title states that it's the study is examining the experiences of student nurses who fail their assignments, when you look at the study, it's actually looking at students who failed their competencies on placement, not failing their academic essays. So the title doesn't marry up with the study being presented. Um, another important thing is to establish what the intention, aim or purpose of the study is. It doesn't have to have all of those elements and a research question, but it should tell you what the study is about. Why? What are they looking at? It might be stated as a research question or a problem. A hypothesis might be stated. It depends on the type of study, but the aim or purpose should be there somewhere in that um, article. And does it does the aim and purpose or research question or hypothesis relate to the research that was conducted? Another thing to think about is why was the study conducted? And there should be a rationale for the study. And that should be set within the context of a literature review or some background information, or it might be national statistics. But there should be a reason for the study um, or a, a problem that needs answering. So is that study set within the context of a current evidence base. We also need to know what type of article, what type of research study or literature review is being conducted. Is it a, a research study or is it a systematic review or is it just an anecdotal opinion piece? And you may find my video on different types of research that includes qualitative, quantitative and mixed method research helpful as I summarise the differences between those research approaches, but also the type of methods and data analysis that aligns to them. And that is helpful if you're critiquing whether there's misalignment in the um, sort of when you're auditing from the research question, for example, the methods used and the data analysis, do they all marry up and, and align? Um, or is it confusing? Or is there just not enough information provided by the authors, which again can be critiqued? So some other tips to help your critique. Is the journal reputable and the article peer reviewed? So, for example, a research study or literature review should be peer reviewed because experts in the field will evaluate the quality of the research. Is the narrative clearly written in the article as well? How is the paper written and structured? Have the authors clearly explained their methods, data analysis and not left anything out? It's important to check who the authors are, what their role is in relation to the topic. They could be healthcare professionals or it could be students in the field. It depends on what the topic is. Um, do they have specific qualifications that would be required to be um, doing research in that field. So you might want to state that it was conducted by experts in the area such as registered hospital nurses or university lecturers or a medical research team. It depends on the type of research and what you're looking at. 
How up to date is the evidence and the date of publication or, or the research study may have a bearing on your critique. We want up to date research and literature reviews if, if available. Um, and we usually say up to a decade old, but the relevance of the publication has to be set in context with an evidence base. So we've got some seminal works, for example, from past research studies that inform our practice today, such as the nursing process that informs care planning. Um, but you could state whether the research conducted is recent um, as part of your critique, or you might say the review was conducted over the last decade, which would be um, correct. Usually with reviews, we go back a decade. It depends on the topic. But um, it might be that the study might be out of date because there's new national guidance or standards. So an example might be preceptorship. So you look at a study from 2015. Now, in NHS England, um, uh, wrote preceptorship standard in 2022. So the study, if you're looking at something prior to 2022, you might want to st state that this study was conducted prior to new national standards on preceptorship. So it has a bearing and, and it's the way your critique might link to setting it in context with um, the current evidence. When you're critiquing a research article, you should also look at the setting and the country. Where was the research conducted? Was it in a hospital or community setting? One ward, was it on one ward or was it in a national study? And it is here that you might find some limitations as findings from one study on one ward are not generalizable to a whole population. Also, was the research just conducted in primary care, GP settings or hospital settings, in which case further research might be required in a variety of settings. And you might suggest that further research in an area is required. Um, is the study is the study, if it's in Sweden, for example, applicable to a study in the UK or in the USA because we have different healthcare systems. And again, this depends on the research study and the research questions. When global research was shared, for example, when we were in the middle of a pandemic with COVID, it had relevance to all countries. Whereas a study about student nurse experiences in the UK may be very different to student nurse experiences in the US as the placements and pre-registration courses differ. Um, Looking at sample population under investigation and the sampling procedures you might want to critique, and it should include inclusion and exclusion criteria um, for research studies and for literature reviews as well, as research studies can have inclusion, uh, literature reviews can have inclusion, exclusion and criteria. Um, so does the sample align with the title and the intentions of the aims of the study? Is the sample size appropriate for the type of study? So you have smaller sample sizes for qualitative studies in comparison to randomised control trials, for example. And there are some general rules on how many interviews you do relating to different research approaches. Um, I've read a lot of observational studies during my PhD that stated nurse patient interactions in the abstract, for example, but the study was observing doctor patient communication. So the actual sample was different to what I expected. So the title and abstract can suggest a different population or sample were observed and you might want to critique that. It's also important to check the sampling process and procedures. Is it clear how they recruited participants such as staff or patients for the study? Is the inclusion and exclusion criteria appropriately applied? Did they use a random sampling approach or convenient sampling? Both approaches are fine, but the researcher needs to justify the approach used. So you should be looking for that in, uh, in an article. Also, the researcher needs to be clear on the ethical and recruitment processes to assure confidentiality and the anonym, uh, anonymity of the participants. Who gave authorization for the research to take place and how were the participants recruited? So there should be no coercion or persuasion involved when recruiting participants. So in the UK, we adhere to national ethical procedures devised by the UK Human Research Authority. And it should be stated when ethical approval was awarded to the researchers to enable them to conduct the study. So you'd be looking for these sort of things in an article. And if they're not there, you could critique that. 
When we look at the study design and methods, we are looking for the reliability of the research tools, the instruments used. Was there a pilot study where study tools or methods were piloted and tested? This is all areas that you could critique potentially. Were the research instrument tools already published? This enhances their validity and study rigour. And was the researcher transparent when they're reporting the methods and the results? So have they been rigorous in the methods used? What data analysis methods were used? Are they clear about those methods? Um, are the methods for qualitative data analysis or statistical analysis given and are they appropriate? Um, and if it's not clear or left ambiguous in the article, then you can critique that. Um, and certain data analysis methods are used to al analyse qualitative or quantitative data and there's software available to help researchers with both types of data as well. Um, if the article is a literature review, which critical appraisal tools did they use to evaluate the studies? Were they clear about those tools? Um, then looking at key findings, research outcomes, conclusions, depending on the type of study, but were those outcomes measured or the conclusions and findings formulated from the data analysed? Uh, is it clear how they were formulated? Do they align with the research methods used, the data analysis um, methods used? So you can see this clear audit trail really from the start to the finishing finish of the research right from the start, the aims and objectives or the research question or hypothesis. Um, links to those findings. Did the researcher do what they set out to do? So I've already talked about strengths and limitations in some of the other slides, but have they been acknowledged by the author? Um, how generalizable are the findings? Quantitative studies might have only descriptive statistics in a local project with no inferential statistics. Um, and that wouldn't be generalizable to whole populations. Similarly, a small qualitative descriptive study would not be generalizable to larger populations without further research. Whereas larger national studies, such as a national survey might be generalizable, but their limitation might be that they lack depth and detail. So for example, you may um, it may be flagged up on a national survey that staff are unhappy with poor staffing levels as an issue that's impacting on nurses or medical mental health in a national survey. But without drawing more exploratory qualitative data, we wouldn't know what the staffing was necessarily in those areas. Um, we wouldn't know where respondents worked if they're anonymized. So, um, so that's a all studies would have limitations in some form and recommendations and practical application. What implications does the study have for staff, patients, institutions? It could be linked to he healthcare professions. What is the relevance of the study? Can the results be applied to your organisation or to other organisations, to the profession through informing future education or research studies? And do the, does the researcher mention that or the authors mention that? So I hope you found those tips helpful. I've got lots more free videos on my YouTube channel, so do check them out and lots of different topics there to help with assignments. And the references are here if you're interested in the Critical Appraisal Skills Programme or the Hong reference on the Mixed Methods Appraisal Tool. So good luck with your critical appraisals. If you have any questions at all, do put them in the YouTube questions or you might prefer to DM me on Twitter or on my website if you prefer not to have them publicly on a on the YouTube channel. Um, and just to be aware, I've got two books that you might be interested um, to support nurses career development, how to thrive as a newly registered nurse and one how to prepare for interviews and develop your career as a nurse or midwife. So I hope you found those helpful. I hope you found the talk helpful today.